This is with me like 24 seven. He's not happy. The point is the music. Here we are, this is my walkie talkie. How you doing baby? Good morning. Good morning. It's early as <laughs> Early as Like, oh my God, is this a good idea? You need coffee? Not necessarily. But, okay. Uh, I mean, I could have one. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Keep going. Keep. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta run for it, <laughs> you know. Ooh, that light looks good right now. Oh yeah, baby. There was a sweet spot uh, early October where right when the rush, like the peak of the rush was hitting, the light was just going down 42nd Street. I haven't felt that feeling, that rush of like taking photos on the street uh, in a long time, like pre-COVID. Up until that point, the city has felt like at 80%. So... Um, you, think, you think at that point it felt more like 100? Or oh yeah, to it just felt. I just felt like old New York. Oh shit! Uh, and that's exciting. Once you, you know, once you get that rush, you just kind of latch onto it again. You know, it's like a drug addict. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, back in the day, I used to walk around like fast pace, just like you know, gunning it. Like there's no time to lose. Kind of reminded me of one of the walkie-talkies you did. But he's like always walking. It reminded me of me like years ago, and I still kind of do it. But yeah, just kind of like. I know that feeling. It was like, dude, there's something around the corner. You gotta, you gotta turn that corner. It's like, it's not there. Let's go to the other corner. Let's yep. go. Keep going. Yeah. Anyway, but these days, I'm kind of, I'm older now. I'm, uh, <laughs> I kind of take my time. I've kind of learned to be okay with not being everywhere at the same time. And just obviously, that's an impossible fucking task. But yeah. Uh, but you sure try. So. Maybe I should hold my camera up. So yeah, maybe let's there's let's kind of chase the sun that way a little bit. Okay. And uh, you know, see what happens. He's got some nice reflections happening. Oh, that guy almost got hit. I know it's not the uh, a lot of photographers don't like going against the light. I really don't care. <laughs> but most people are like, uh, well, you know, I have a flash to work with, so that's that makes a difference. So I, I get it. This corner's looking all right. Good morning. <laughs> Yo, we're back with another walkie-talkie. We got the homie Camillo. Camillo? Camillo? Camillo. That's what? loud as fuck over here. <laughs> Introduce yourself, man. Uh, my name is Camilo Fuentealba. I am a Canadian Chilean photographer based in New York City and here we are. This is my walkie-talkie. And it's early, man. It's, it's uh, we got here at 7.30 a.m. 7.30, yeah. Usually, I mean, the sun's, you know, it's, the sunrise is a little later these days, so sometimes I'm a little, I'm much earlier, but uh, I like a good morning shoot. Uh, keeps you on your toes. There's a lot to be, uh, a lot to be photographed, obviously, in the mornings. It's, it's a fun thing to do for me. It's just, uh, and it's also like, you know, waking up early and like committing to that is, uh, is important, I think, you know? Yeah. Discipline, I think discipline. Discipline, is, yeah. thank you, that's Good. the word. Discipline. I yep. think you have to have some discipline or else, you know, shit ain't gonna happen. Plus that morning light, look at that guy. I mean, look, look at this morning light. Just look at it, it's just like, so perfect on Camilo right now. What kind of photography are you into? How would you describe it? And like, how long have you been kind of doing it? I'm into all types of different photography. Uh, portraiture. I like to photograph on the streets also. My style kind of pulls, pulls me into the fashion world also. Um, so I do like, I do enjoy photographing fashion. And I'm thinking of like really taking it another level now because it's been kind of like one foot in, one foot out in a way. But I've been doing this most of my life. I've been, I've been in love with photography since I was a kid. And you know, the cliche story of your mom always carrying a camera and photographing her kids. I have boxes and boxes of Polaroids. So I always gravitated towards a camera, just like as a tool. And, and I just, at an early age, realized that you could say a lot with this, with this, this machine. You know, I had spurts of like being into it and then fell out of love for a while and then get, jumped back into it. 
But uh, around the age of 23, I decided to, to go to school and kind of take it to another level. Uh, and I also started learning about, you know, art photography and learning about other photographers. Like Martin Parr was an early influence. Sure. I love uh, Lars Turnbjörk, although that's a later influence. I only discovered him like five, four, four years ago. Another, another photographer actually that influenced me at an early, early age was uh, Helmut Newton, fashion photographer. But after all that, I finished school. It's like I kind of didn't really know what to do with photography. I was kind of like almost embarrassed when people called me a photographer because at that point, like most of my 20s and early 30s, I didn't really stick to anything. I was kind of not really even photographing much. I was just kind of like doing it lazily, like whatever. And I was embarrassed. My friends would be like, this is Camille, he's a photographer. I'm like, I was really, back then I remember being embarrassed because I didn't feel like a photographer. Anyway, uh, I decided to commit. Where the, where the commitment part it goes back to that. Um, I decided to stop looking at magazines, all types of photos, and carry my camera around and hang out with new friends from New York and say yes to everything, like road trips, carry my camera around 24 seven and just photograph things that just pulled me in. And then slowly I started to build the confidence as an image maker and I started feel, feeling good about it. And that slowly led into the, the streets and started photographing the streets maybe in like 2013, 2012. Okay. Kind of seriously, not kind of, pretty like very seriously. I mean, I, I've, since then I've, this is, this is with me like 24 seven, like rarely I don't have it. So I've been doing it seriously and confidently uh, for about 10 years. Yeah, I mean the decade, that's, that's a, that's a good, that's a, that's a good chunk. Time. That's a good chunk of years on your know. belt. I think about it, and I'm like, holy shit! It's uh, that's a lot time of time flies. A lot of film, a lot of money. <laughs> it's funny though. I'm not as prolific as a shooter as most people. I'm a slow shooter, in that sense. I don't really go crazy shooting things. It's a weird kind of balance between intuition, yeah, and this kind of calculating thing that you know. Sometimes I think about it. Um, I've been trying to tip that scale over to like more just let it, let it flow and. As of lately, I, I've been shooting a lot from like this angle, just to practice. I did it for a bit and I would always miss. I don't know how I'm doing right now because I haven't developed film almost all year. I have like a whole tub full of undeveloped film. Dang. <laughs> Why I'm not doing that is just because I need to like step back from the process a little bit and just kind of let myself shoot. I just felt like I was shooting too much for Instagram and like, I don't go on Instagram a whole lot. So I can go months without posting something just because it, I need that break. I need to kind of detach from social media and yeah. and that feeling of of like working for Instagram in a way. And I think most of us have that feeling maybe. Wow, th we've lost the sun like pretty, pretty quick. Yeah. That makes sense. It goes really fast this time yeah. of year. I wonder if we should kind of follow it yeah, this way. Yeah, I think way. on the other yeah. side. So why, why media format for street photography? I feel like most people don't do that just because uh, of the sheer number of frames you get in a roll? It, I mean, the quality for me is, you know, really important, I think. Just, I always envision my, my work much larger than, you know, what 35 can potentially output. And you rock it with the, the Mamiya 7 The two? Mamiya 7 2, yes. Mamiya 7 2. This is my second Mamiya 7 2. Uh, the first one I lost in, uh, in Spain. I fell asleep on this beach from a long ass bus ride and went to the beach, fell asleep and got woken up by the tide. <laughs> and, it, and it literally, I mean, it drenched everything I had, including my oh very hard my earned God. Mamiya 7-2. This is, uh, yeah, it was like about 10 years ago now. And the light is so good here because you got the reflective light yep. as well as the, the direct light. I took a photo from the other side of this man and it's, uh, Obviously this side is shadow and then it was a row of people waiting across and this one business guy with a yellow bag was the only person that had the, the hit on his face and everybody else kind of fell, fell off. Not like the usual photo that I make because I'm like very much a flash photographer, but I take them nonetheless because it's in front of me and I also really do appreciate natural light. I just kind of choose not to, to do it as much. But sometimes I do turn the flash off. It's, it's, a, it's rare. I wonder if I should... For you to get right with the Savior. All right. 
What got you into Flash? Like, what, like, you're a Flash photographer, but, like, what was, like, why were you, like, okay, fuck it, I'm shooting Flash? Flash was a way of just basically getting the colors out a little bit more. It's like your, uh, your, your paintbrush, in a way. It's kind of, like, just bringing the colors up and, uh, shadows are not so deep although I don't mind deep shadows. You know, it's one of those things that just worked for me and I stuck to it. It wasn't also, it wasn't something that I consciously chose at the same time. It, all those things kind of just, you know, started to come into realization as I was shooting throughout the years. And when I discovered Lars Turmbjörn, his like later work was all flash and just incredible. The stuff he did with uh, the offices and I think it was in the 80s, like Japan, New York. He basically went into offices and like, photograph people in their environments and just kind of chaotic situations and it was all taken with flash uh, it looks I think it, I think it was shot with the Mimia 7 we're losing Sun we are losing Sun losing it quick so one one other thing I like about walking the streets and uh, doing this type of photography is even the photos I don't take like even with like just watching people interact with each other, uh, small little gestures, small gestures of love. Uh, you know, like the classic tourist, like the dad with his family trying to be funny. Just like these little sweet moments, little uh, moments of humanity. Little moments of humanity. Yeah. Uh, and there's terrible ones too, and, and comedic ones also. Like even if I don't take one photo all day, I could see those moments sometimes, and it's enough to kind of. You know, walk walk away okay but yeah there's there's days that I don't I don't shoot one photo there could be several days in a row that's happened where I just don't I'm not connecting and the streets are just not lively look at this I need to focus I still have my days where I get nervous you seem pretty confident though like uh, I've lately I have but you know what like the first half of this year I have to admit I wasn't I kind of I was scared I was like nervous again I was like what is going on with me and uh, I just wasn't connecting with it that much I was still shooting but uh, it was just different I couldn't tell you why but I kept on shooting I still have a lot of a lot of film from that time but then October early October happened like I was at that corner on 42nd Street and I like got over it immediately and, and, and I've been like confident ever since and I hope I continue to I'm sure at some point I'm gonna like feel that same feeling so if somebody's like I want to start taking flash photos but like they're timid just do just it do it body language is important you can't just go like ah you have to think about your body language and most of the most of the time people don't care it's really rare that people yell at you and if they do like you know just learn how to diffuse that it's intention you have to have the intention the intention has to be strong in order for it to like work and sometimes it doesn't work you know that's a, the the gut feeling this intuition betrays you a lot and this type of well in life in general really it's not always correct but this type of photography we do heightens that we're like trusting our intuition constantly out in the streets and and uh, sometimes the photo is really good rarely you know but you have to keep Trusting that intuition, have that intention, and be brave and just take the photo. And then, you know, ask questions later. This is kind of funny. There's a New York poster sticking out of the dumpster. Oh, shit. Dude, that's like a, is that like a legit poster? It looks like it. That kind of looks old. Like. Taking it out? Yeah. Oh, shit. There's a whole thing. Believe in your self stay up all <laughs> night work outside your <laughs> habits wow. no way <laughs> you guys inspired yet jeez look at it look at what we're giving you guys come on wow this is a sign literally literally a sign believe in your self stay up all night work outside of your habits know when to speak up collaborate don't procrastinate get over your self keep learning form follows function a computer is a light bright for bad ideas. Find inspiration everywhere. Network, educate your client. Trust your gut, although sometimes that doesn't work in uh, what we do. Uh, ask for, but that doesn't mean you should stop. Ask for help, make it sustainable. Question everything. Have a 
concept. This is an angry poster at the same time. Learn to take some criticism. That's very true. Very important. Make me care. Use spell check. <laughs> Do your research. Sketch more ideas. The problem contains a solution. Think about all the possibilities. Yes. Wow. Listen, if you came to this walkie talkie look for inspiration, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you are welcome. You, this you're is welcome. incredible. Whoa, that's wild. Should we be wearing masks right now? Dude, I have no film. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I forgot to load. <laughs> luckily, it's a, it's a, it's a, luckily it's a, it's not like a, a scene that is running away from us. Yeah, it happens sometimes, you know, you forget. I rarely forget these days. Good old Fuji Pro, Pro 400H. I'm gonna be sad when the stock's I was gonna like, say, are you still able to get it pretty regularly? Oh yeah. Yeah, they still, they're still back stock and it's actually cheaper than Portra. So I probably just ruined it for everyone right now and everyone's <laughs> gonna go buy it. Just ruin it for myself also. Nah, that's all right. Go get Portra. It's a great film. I mean, uh, Fuji 400H. He's not happy. What was your experience shooting with that GFX? I know you were. Uh, oh yes, you, you were with that GFX uh, for a little bit. You know, I li I like the GFX 50R a lot. I just need to invest in a wider lens, and I think it's a good alternative for when you know if this happens to you know break or or whatever. I hope not. But uh, I I just you know I I just love analog. I've always I mean I've never stopped shooting film. Although I did for a bit because it was an economic thing, and I always bring up bring up the uh, vinyl CD um, analogy, where you know uh, people prefer vinyl because of the sound quality. It's a different it's a different quality to the song. The digital file is gonna still be nice, and the, you're gonna still hear the music and enjoy it. Some people just choose to to uh, listen to vinyl. If you're a digital shooter out there, it doesn't matter. The music still sounds good. The intention, I think, is really what matters the most and, and, and then your eye and, and all the decisions you make to make that photo uh, a good one. That's what matters. You're not better than another photographer because you use film or you use digital or a certain type of camera. A lot of people kind of tend to gravitate towards those things and it's really, they're missing the point. The point is the music. I think part of taking it, taking it to the next step is creating books and creating prints and, and smaller publications where it extends the work out there and gives it more life. And ultimately, like we all want the photos to live on a, on a physical realm and not so much in the screen. What's up, Walkie Talkie series? This is Walkie Talkie with Polly V. <laughs> Where are you from, Polly? I'm from the DMV. <laughs> What's your favorite F-stop? Um, 14th Street. 14th Street? Mine's East Broadway. What's that? All right, I'm sorry. Cash and everything. What's that? Can I have your permission? Thanks for the pose. Yeah, man, that's okay. Right on time. It's New York City. Nice. Nice. Have a good day. It's unusual. Pose for me. That was nice. 
I've seen that guy. I mean, we've all seen him so many times. Do you know what you're looking for? Nah, uh, never. <laughs> uh, never. It's all feeling. Never really uh, think about it. Just kind of go with what pulls you in, and that's you're scanning for certain things, right? Until it hits, but like a specific thing, I don't know until I see it. So I'm just kind of like seeing like a whole area, but also like details. Yeah. Sometimes I go in, you know, it could be hands or like yeah. a bag. Yeah, just why are you photographing us, mate? Why are you taking photos of us? I'm just documenting right now. That's all I'm doing. It's nothing personal. What, what's it for? I do street photography. It's like, well, it's that genre, so it kind of document life oh, and details. Yeah, 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 so you're just getting details. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not, cool. it's not, it's, good. yeah. No, no, good. I'm so, sorry if I, uh, you no, know. No, you haven't done anything. I, I get it, man. Have it's a good day. Absolutely fine. All right, Cheers. brother. All right. That guy was upset. Me taking a photo of him. Once you explain yourself in a nice way, of course, uh, usually people get it. Sometimes they don't want to hear it though. But uh, at that point, you just apologize and uh, just like move on. His mood just totally switched from, you know, upset to like understanding and fucking loving. <laughs> All right, man, it's been a day. I appreciate it. It's been a morning. It hasn't even been a day. It's like noon. Um, we're wrapping up the video. I appreciate you and all the wisdom you dropped. Uh, let the people know where they can uh, find your work, where they can reach out and, and hit you up. Uh, you can reach me on Instagram, of course. Uh, Camilo.FuenteAlba.Brevis. Uh, you're going to have to pause the video to write that shit down because it's a long ass handle. Polly, thanks so much for having me. It's been a, an amazing experience doing this walkie talkie. I wish you all the best, brother. And everybody out there, I wish you the best. Un saludo para mi gente latina. Love you all. See ya. Peace. Now, when they see us in the streets, all they want to do is take